Greetings. Today we're talking about the Bozon, the Strafe Bozon in particular. Got a lot of new synergies applied to the Strafe skill itself. In addition to having the 25% reduction removed during the PTR, this will significantly increase your capabilities, especially early on uh, with the starter build. Calculated at this level 66, we were getting something in the range of a 40% DPS increase just from these things combined at this level, right? So uh, one of the cool things here is we have put together a progression that includes the Arathas set. So, you know, the helm, the gloves, the belt, and the amulet. And this set already was pretty strong because it covers your resistances, gives you maximum resistances to uh, negate a lot of incoming elemental damage, plus it, you know, takes care of handling uh, all of those all the way through Nightmare. It already gave faster run on it, but the new affix to this set is the piercing attack, 24%. And it may not seem like much, but in my opinion, this is enough to make it better of a choice for this particular starter build, as compared to, say, an Angelic's, you know, Death's uh, set combination, right? Which are already pretty pretty darn hard to beat. Uh, the piercing attack is really good. It saves you points on pierce, skill points on pierce, that is. And it's just a really well-rounded set that gets you going early. Uh, now, uh, some, some, one of the other things that we're taking a look at is the uh, cheaper correct progression that you can put together with insight in a bow now. And this is something I've always wanted to check out, but had to take the time to actually test it. One of the cool things about the inside in a bow is not just getting, you know, meditation or to cover your mana, but you also have the attack rating here. 250% bonus is really beneficial, considering that you have to give up a lot of points in the passive skill tree to be able to cover uh, fully saturating your guided arrow and multiple shot to stack those synergies up now. Uh, so having this affix makes it a lot more appeal appealing as compared to, say, a harmony um, start. Now you also get plus to critical strike, uh, MF, mana after each kill, which is really cool. Harmony as well is also a really good uh, bow, gives you Vigor Aura for the movement speed, you get to summon a Valkyrie, even though you may not have points in its prerequisites, which is pretty darn cool. Whereas the Insight has more physical damage and gives you a bit better leech uh, than the Harmony. Harmony will provide more elemental damage and help you take down magic and elemental resistant monsters a little bit more readily. So. Uh, this is just an overview of the two different setups. I'm going to now transition into going over the progression as I see it, because there are two different paths that I've prepared here. One is like a cheaper option. Sometimes they come out to about the same cost. But this build in particular, this progression, starter progression, is not going to be your first character. Strafe is still, uh, uh, physical boson for that matter, is still heavily gear dependent of a character. And I would not recommend starting this character in the ladder. However, as like a second or third character that you have a little bit of this gear to help you along with, it still makes a lot of sense and is going to be even more enjoyable of an experience now. So let's get started. So level 17, the Ravenclaw setup. Ravenclaw is a bow, fires explosive arrows or bolts. Your normal attack will deal fire AoE damage, which is really cool mechanic here that we're utilizing. Uh, since it's your normal bow attack, it means you're not expending mana. At earlier levels, mana is very hard to come by, so this is pretty darn cool. We're also putting on the four-piece Aratha, level 15. Uh, one of the cool things is the belt is a heavy belt, so you do get three rows of potion slots at the very minimum. And yeah, it's just a really good set, like I mentioned, for resistances. To further those resistances, we're placing the Dark Glow Ring Mail. And while I did not max out at uh, plus, I believe it's plus 90, 90% uh, here uh, that we could go up to with our charm setup. You can definitely place additional charms or better charms in your inventory, but getting a bare minimum of 85 will resist 
is going to be quite nice. Getting uh, 32, either 20% or 32%. Faster hit recovery, also very good. And we have the maximum stamina charms coming in play at these early levels, going to be very useful. Another piece here that uh, is going to be very useful as well is going to be the Cow King's boots. And this is another piece that we're going to keep throughout our entire progression because it is a little bit more costly to either trade for or acquire. Uh, I wanted to give it some longevity for this particular starter progression. However, it is a nice piece both in the early game and later in the game. Uh, later, the plus dexterity and the magic find start to become a really more appealing. But even in the early game, the faster run walk and the added fire damage is really what we're looking at here. Gives you not only increasing your uh, single target fire AoE, but the explosion damage is also increased significantly from that added fire damage. You see here, I take them off. It's decreased considerably. So uh, this is really the combination that's going to get you uh, increased DPS for clearing these early levels in normal, which is quite good indeed. Note we're also using uh, Cathens for Life Leech, and then we're just filling in a Nagel Ring for extra AR and Magic Find. So for the Mercenary, we are using a Prayer Mercenary just to heal us up a little bit more readily. He's going to use a Dust Deep, a Dark Glow, and a Blood Thief for Life Leech, which is really good. Uh, note also the skill setup is pretty plain at this point. You're just putting your base, getting your base critical strike and saving up points for later in the bow tree. So we have two options for level 32 where we're farming Nightmare Bale in normal. Uh, this is going to be the cheaper of the two options was a Sky Strike variation. Sky Strike is very good because it gives increased attack speed, decent enhanced damage, uh, plus one to skill levels, and also a lot of lightning damage. So you're getting like half physical, half lightning damage, which is really cool. And uh, you, you're able to keep your Dark Glow because you hit the attack speed breakpoints needed with the extra 30% and the 20% from the set. So this is really cool. And you're able to keep your Mercenary because you don't have to swap over a Mercenary. However, you will put Insight on this particular Mercenary to help you know, with your mana regeneration. Even still, with both uh, this build and Insight Worn, we're still going to maintain the Minolt Heal Ring for Mana Leech in the builds because uh, we don't have a lot of maximum mana. Uh, it means the mana regeneration gained from Insight is not enough to cover uh, the costs of Strafe at this point in time. So you need a little bit extra to just uh, not have to spam mana potions. We're also going to optimize our charm setup, get a little bit of plus mana charms, uh, maybe small charms that give the resistances. So optimizations there as well. And yeah, it's just a really good build. Skill-wise, you're going to place a lot of this extra skill points into Guided Arrow because it is a synergy now for Strafe. And you're going to put as many points as you can in Strafe as you're leveling it. This is the max we can do at this level. So uh, it turns out that Guided Arrow actually does better single target than your Strafe will at this point, which is really interesting to note as well. Now, the Insight build has the benefit of extra attack ratings, so you will hit more often, get more physical leech, which is quite nice. However, it does require the Twitch throw. So, this is an exceptional bow base that I was testing with, a Razor Bow. It's, this is why I'm saying it's a little bit more expensive to put together, even though it is a cheap rune word. And then we're also using uh, Twitch, obviously, earlier in season is just going to be really expensive. So, yeah, uh, at your own cost, basically. One cool thing that you can do at this point, however, is go for the Act 3 Fire Mercenary. The Fire Mercenary gives you an enchant buff, which is pretty cool, and it's not shown yet, but let me apply it. It gives you a lot more attack rating. Oops, wrong skip. See, we get up to 91% now with the enchant. Uh, even though we are we were pretty high on our accuracy already, but this increases overall DPS considerably 
uh, making strafe uh, a more competitive option, especially giving you a little bit more fire damage. So that's really cool. And the Act 3 Mercenary is fairly, get, does a lot of damage at this level anyway. His gear is pretty cheap. Uh, we're going to give him a lore or it's all Tal Eth stealth just to get that faster cast rate up. Wall of the Eyeless, very cheap, faster cast rate. And then Spirit and a Crystal Sword. So a little bit more expensive on this one, but hopefully if you've already played through the game on like a Sorceress or something, you have an extra one of these available. You can use it and just give it to your mercenary. So a little bit more expensive of a setup, but it did feel a little bit better performing. So level 42 in the progression, you're going to be performing like Act 2 Tomb Runs, this sort of activity for increased XP as you are starting to progress into Nightmare. And to uh, be able to deal more DPS and the cheaper of the options at this point in the starter progression is actually going to be Insight in a bow. So uh, really cool. We've got an Ashwood bow, which is an exceptional base. Even at plus one, it's still going to be great. Notably, we do have a jewel with 15% increased attack speed. Uh, this is to hit just a better breakpoint on the strafe. However, note, you know, if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. However, it is nice at this point in the progression if you couldn't afford it or have one available. Uh, to cover the resistances that we need for Nightmare, uh, we're going to use a smoke armor. This is Nephilim. Should be affordable at this point, but it gives you a lot of resists and faster hit recovery, allowing us to hit a slightly better breakpoint, even with the same charm setup, which is pretty neat uh, at this point in the progression. Something to note is we are able to drop the Minolte Heal Ring if we want, because the mana recovery that you're getting from your Meditation Aura should be enough to cover it. However, uh, I do remember that you can swap it back in if you are still seeing mana issues with your uh, strafe costs. Still, uh, the life leech felt really good, however, just to, since we aren't, since we don't have a prayer merc anymore, uh, just having that Cathans on hand is really nice. For the mercenary, uh, we are running still the Act 3 Fire Mercenary, and because he is a higher level and his gear is slightly upgraded, so still has the lore and he still has the spirit, but we're going to give him a spirit shroud, which has plus one, cannot be frozen, which is quite nice. And then we also have a lidless wall, which is plus one and 20% faster cast. So these are a little bit more costly, so if you can't afford them, that's fine. You can still place like a Saigon's shield, would also give plus one, even though it doesn't have the FCR, that's still a great choice. And this will give him a higher level enchant, which gives us more attack rating, even more uh, fire damage, which is kind of the weakness of this setup. It's like really heavy physical, really good leech, but uh, doesn't really have a lot of off-element DPS coming from it. So uh, both the Enchant and the Cow King's Boots are going to be relied on for this sort of use at this point in time. So, yeah. Another thing to note is don't really upgrade your Arathis Heavy Bell yet. However, uh, you can place more points in Strength and Dexterity to cover gear and uh, increase vitality as well. Notably, the skill setup, we're continuing to put points in Strafe and Guided Arrow. However, we have put five points in Pierce. This will make it so that our arrows can now uh, pierce enemies and deal increased damage versus density, which is really cool. Uh, once you start getting to this point, you can really see the benefit of the Pierce uh, from both your own skills and the Aratha set coming into play. So for Harmony, there are a lot of benefits to going Harmony instead. Uh, you get the Vigor Aura, which gives mobility. Uh, stamina, you get the Enhanced Damage, Lightning Fire, and Cold Damage for that multi-element, being able to take down magic-resistant enemies a little bit better. The Valkyrie uh, is kind of unique to this particular bow because you can't spare the points in Passive Tree anymore. Because the Harmony does not have enough attack rating, we are running an offensive um, normal mercenary at this point. 
to be able to feed us enough attack rating to hit enemies from the Blessed Aim aura. And you're also going to want to keep your Act 2 Mercenary close by because he's going to give you insight. So you're kind of dependent on your Mercenary being around, however, that's not such a big deal because uh, he is kind of nice to have around anyway. Uh, it is slightly higher DPS uh, as compared to the other setup. And yeah, it hits a little bit less, but when you do hit, you deal more elemental damage. So this is the benefit of this particular build. And it definitely felt good moving around with it. So notably, if you do have the currency at level 46, you can use a gold strike arch, uh, which also gives bonus attack rating similar to the insight and has a ton of attack speed, chance to cast Fist of the Heavens, damage to demons, damage to the dead. You can even socket it with a Nefrim to get a little bit more knockback, keep you safe. So even though you're moving around slower and you have a little bit more issues with mana management, I kind of feel like the leech from the Maltiel is so high with the increased physical DPS that you don't even need an insight on your mercenary. You can just go like a Hunks and Dan, go all out with the Orphan's Call, Winged Helm, get that extra crushing glow in the build, and yeah, it's just like a rock star, stellar, heavy, high DPS setup that I felt performed best at this level. However, it's kind of really expensive to put together, and yeah, we'll move along. So level 66, you can now use insight and this is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, not recommend this for a, you know, starter progression in the ladder, like maybe a second or third character is more appropriate because having the matriarchal base at this point is going to be very nice. You'll be farming Nightmare Bale. Uh, it doesn't feel as good without an elite bow base. So hope you, hopefully you can find a trade for like even just a plus one would be great to have at this point. Um, you can upgrade your belt also. Uh, you have enough currency at this point just to get those extra potion slots. We are running the Act 2 Nightmare Offensive Mercenary because the insight again gives us that extra attack rating. We don't need and we're now wearing the Raven Frost, which gives us additional attack rating, cannot be frozen, etc. Uh, you can get away with running uh, just the extra DPS here from, and it feels really nice for Leech in terms of Life Leech. Uh, the extra physical DPS just feels amazing. And yeah, it's just a really good setup. Notice charms are a little bit different. You might be able to acquire like a plus one passive. Uh, be able to get some faster run walk or attack rating charms, that would be very nice. Uh, Geeds at this point, if you have an extra one laying around, just put it on this character. And then a few like maybe elemental DPS charms and magic fine charms perhaps to kind of round out the build. Uh, let's see. You can go back to using uh, the Perfect Tobaz in the helmet for this particular setup uh, because the way the uh, attack speed breakpoints round out you cannot hit 40%, uh, you can only hit 35, so uh, you might as well get the extra magic find instead. That was my viewpoint there. For the mercenary's gearing, you can upgrade to like an exceptional uh, weapon perhaps for him, uh, get him a Tal's mask for cheap life leech and all resists and extra life and such. And then we also have the rattle cage, which is uh, probably going to be a little bit more expensive to acquire, but is really nice for this point, keeping your mercenary alive and allowing him to deal increased crushing blow against uh, Bale in particular. It's going to be really good. For the skill setup at this point, you will invest more in your bow synergies. Uh, and rounding out like a one point Valkyrie is actually quite nice. Putting more points into Pierce to be able to get like 99% is really nice actually. So those were my uh, choices at this point. So for the Harmony, again, using a matriarchal bow base is going to be nice for increased DPS. Large benefit here, again, is just being able to get that Valkyrie without having to invest the passive skill points. This means higher DPS uh, 
higher, higher investment into multiple shot gives you higher damage from synergies in the bow tree. Something we are using again to get the attack rating that we need is going to be that offensive normal mercenary. So we keep the, the blessed aim mercenary to be able to hit targets. Uh, similarly, we're putting more points in the pierce and yeah, it's just a really good, well-rounded setup that in Nightmare, having those uh, extra fire, cold, and lightning procs on enemies is going to be quite nice. Uh, I did use the Minal Teal for the Harmony instead of uh, the Life Leech because it felt like it needed just a little bit more mana regen uh, compared to the Insight setup, which has always has insight on your character versus this one which uh, some of the time the mercenary may be out of range so just having that little bit extra felt good and again the helmet uh, you can go either with an increased is jewel or you can go with a, a topaz the only difference here it's the same breakpoint for strafe however you will go up a breakpoint for your guided arrow uh, if you go with the IS Jewel. Can be useful more with the Harmony setup in my opinion because you you get guaranteed hits with the Guided Arrow so like if you're killing bosses with the Harmony setup being able to hit them guaranteed is a little bit more useful. And I hope you've enjoyed this start of progression for the Amazon, uh, the Strafe Amazon, the Physical Boazon. <laughs> The Aratha set in particular is going to be very nice for this starter progression, being able to keep the same thing until you get to like a more budget-minded setup is quite nice. I think even though this isn't a day one ladder start build, it will still be a fun progression to put together and play through with. So 